So today I'm going to be talking to you about the RCBS 502 scale, powder scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a base for it. So we can level the scale properly. We're also going to talk about accurizing the scale. Setting up the uh, powder pan. We're going to remove the weight from the powder pan. We're going to put new weights in the pan and calibrate this scale so it reads even every time. We're also going to deal with this issue over here. I don't know if you can see it too well. But that's very hard to read, so we're going to fix that too. The scale has a magnetic damper in it. It's controlled by this uh, little piece of copper there. And inside the base. There are weights on either side. I'm sorry, there are magnets on either side of the base. That keeps it from bouncing out of control. It settles it down. So we're going to address these issues. And we're going to see if we can make this thing way perfect every time. So here I have a sheet of aluminum. It measures 12 inches by 6 inches by 0.125 inches thick. What we're going to do is we're going to place a level, bubble level, on one end, with an adjustable screw next to it for elevation. And on this end, we're going to put one screw here that's stationary, one here that's adjustable. The bubble level will be here, and the other adjustment will be here. We're also going to be using a piece of brass channel on this end that we can set the scale onto to keep it lined up to keep it from sliding around on the table. We're going to take this piece of brass here, it's a U channel, we're going to cut it to length, we're going to epoxy it in place about a quarter inch or a half inch from the edge so that way the edge of the scale will sit in there and keep from sliding this way or that way. So these are the parts we're going to be using. We have a 440 socket head screw with a plastic adjustment, uh, adjustable cap on it. we're using for the two adjustments is a 440 screw this one's one inch the one on that end will be one inch and these are little plastic socket head caps little knobs to make turning the screws a little bit easier here we're going to have a 632 screw with a washer and a lock nut it's going to go through this corner right here that will be our stationary point. I picked up this bullseye surface level from Harbor Freight for 67 cents plus tax and $1.29 for two part epoxy. We're going to be using that on the brass channel which we'll cut to two inches long. And this we're going to attach right here with some of these. Little bitty 440 screws. We're going to be using these 632 machine screws, or one inch long, with plastic knobs just pressed on. We're going to use one there on that corner, and one on this side, and this bubble level is going to sit right next to it. We're going to use the epoxy. Two-part epoxy from Harbor Freight. 
epoxy down this brass U channel about a half inch from the edge here perfectly perpendicular to this line and we're going to cut that to about two inches long we'll get an exact measurement once we measure the, the bottom of the scale We're also going to be using Dicom Blue, Steel Blue, Layout Fluid. You can buy this at any parts supplier, machine shop, supplies, welding supplies. I got this one from I got this Dicom Steel Blue Layout Fluid from Granger. It's about eight bucks a bottle. A little bit goes a long way. We're going to use that to lay out for the holes. The three holes. So we can mark them. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. Okay, I have my caliper set at one half inch exactly. I'm going to use this as my measurement for the location, to lay out the location of the three screws that I'm going to be using for the adjustments. And now I'm going to set my caliper to three inches. Yeah, it should do it. Three inches exactly. We're going to measure halfway. Ah. Okay, now that we have these measurements done, I'm going to put this away for now. Next we'll be over to the drill press where I'll drill holes for the three positions. Sorry, one hole will be drilled for, a clearance hole will be drilled for the stationary pin. And these two will be drilled to accept the 632 tap. Alrighty, I'm going to use a center punch here. And we're going to punch the location of these three holes. I'm going to use my, move my 632 tap to drill a bit out of the way. I'm going to use this flat part of the vise here. All right, so now my three locations are marked out. Over to the drill press. All right, I've got my drill bit perfectly lined up, both horizontally and vertically. X, Y axis, not perpendicular. 
and we're going to drill all three holes using the tap size bit first and then I will open up one of the back corner to allow open clearance for the 632 screw. Okay, while I have the vise in this position, since this is going to be the back corner, I'm going to go ahead and change out this bit and insert a clearance bit for the 632 screw. All right, you probably can't see this, but let's see if I can get the camera closer. This thing is very, very close to the adjustable jaw. So as I go down, I will have very little room for clearance to drill this hole. very close. Got three holes are drilled. I'll take this bit out because I will need it in the future so I have to put it back in the box with my taps. I'm going to show you what I did. It's really hard to see. I epoxy that about three, almost four thousandths, a uh, four tenths of an inch long needle, sewing needle, really thin. Actually, it's a straight pin that I cut and epoxied in place with just a very, very minute amount of epoxy, just enough to make the little sucker stick. And yes, I did stick myself with this stupid thing twice, but. It'll be a much more accurate pointer 
and you'll actually be able to see it cross the line. So when it dries, we'll get to balancing the scale. Uh, rather, cal we'll get to calibrating the frism to the bar to the scale. Alright, what I've done is to calibrate this scale, I took the frism apart. It has a Phillips screw, stainless steel screw, and you take it apart, you just pop this off the hanger and loosen this up. And once you get it open, you'll find that there's a bunch of lead weights inside right here. There's some lead shot. And these are BBs, 177 caliber BBs. I just grabbed them out of a box because I noticed that some of my lead had corroded. So what I did then is I cleaned the pan out really good inside here, assembled the prism, hung it back on the arm, zoom in here and I proceed to put the little copper coated BBs in my powder pan one at a time a little too close until my scale red zero I had to adjust this up and down a little bit. I had to make the adjustment on the foot there. Just a little bit to get it to zero out perfectly. But if you notice, if you notice, I'll lower this so you can see. proper angle. The scale net reads perfectly even zero and is completely horizontal. It can't be up, it can't be down, it has to be horizontal. That's how a balanced scale works. The proper amount of weight in the prism, in the prism, the proper amount of weight in the prism with the needle zeroed out The counterweights set at both zero. Everything should be perfect. Very simple. I saved all of my extra weights just in case I ever have to recalibrate the scale. Now let me show you. My stand. We have the level here, which is perfectly centered. I adjusted vertically here first, up and down, locked it down, moved to this adjustment here, and centered the bubble forward to back. And if you can see, it's kind of a bad angle. but it's sitting perfectly level. Great little stand. My table is not very level as you can see. See the difference in height. So this takes all the guesswork. Is my scale balanced or not? Hmm. Well, now it is. Now all I have to do is take the copper pellets, BBs, and there is a little piece of lead shot, a couple pieces of lead shot in there, rolling around. See them? And stick them back inside the prism, right here. I'll just unscrew that, put them back in there, and then we're done. We're calibrated. All right, what I've done is to calibrate this scale. I took the prism apart. 
has a, a Phillips screw, stainless steel screw, and you take it apart, you just pop this off the hanger and loosen this up. And once you get it open, you'll find that there's a bunch of lead weights inside, right here. There's some lead shot, and these are BBs, 177 caliber BBs. I just grabbed them out of a box because I noticed that some of my lead had corroded. So, what I did then, is I cleaned the pan out really good, inside here, assembled the prism, hung it back on the arm, I zoom in here, and I proceed to put little copper coated BBs in my powder pan one at a time a little too close until my scale read zero now I had to adjust this up and down a little bit I had to make the adjustment on the foot there just a little bit to get it to zero out perfectly but if you notice if you know this I'll lower this so you can see you get the proper angle the scale that reads perfectly even zero and it's completely horizontal. It can't be up, it can't be down, it has to be horizontal. That's how a balanced scale works. The proper amount of weight in the prism, in the prism, with the proper amount of weight in the prism, with the needle zeroed out, the counterweights set at both zero, everything should be perfect very simple I saved all of my extra weights just in case I ever have to recalibrate the scale now let me show you my stand we have the level here which is perfectly centered I adjusted vertically here first up and down locked it down move to this adjustment here and center the bubble forward to back and if you can see it's kind of a bad angle but it's sitting perfectly level great little stand my table is not very level as you can see see the difference in height so this takes all the guesswork is my scale balanced or not hmm, well now it is now all I have to do is take the copper pellets BB's and there is a little piece of lead shot a couple pieces of lead shot in there rolling around see them and stick them back inside the prism right here I'll just unscrew that, put them back in there, and then we're done. We're calibrated. And I'll show you how we take apart the prism real quick. You just pop this little hanger off. Unscrew. Kind of overkill on this length of the screw that they used. Carefully pour my pellets in to the side, that way none of them bounce out the hole, especially the lead shot. Carefully place this back on, just so nobody goes AWOL, especially the lead shot, which is very, very tiny. Now 
I'll hook my hanger back up. And it just snaps into place. Put the frizzle back on. And And as you can see, where it's zeroed, perfectly zeroed. Easy, easy. Thanks for watching.